Welcome back to What Are Team Noobs with General Disturbance. This is the Excelsior. It's the Tier 5 British Premium Heavy Tank. It's located on the south spawn of Mountain Pass, and this one is under the command of Provo Bob. Now, as he's on the Australian New Zealand server, it, they do have a shortage of players every now and then, and I'm afraid there are bots in this game. But remember those bots, they are sometimes very difficult to kill. Game on. Well, Trevor Bob's got two marks of excellence on the barrel of this one. And you know he likes playing the Excelsior a lot, and he knows all the strong points and the weak points of this vehicle. Basically, the armour at the front of the vehicle and at the rear is very strong, but you don't want to let the enemy shoot into your sides. So you really need to keep your face to the enemy and not let them get behind you, or at least not get them alongside you so they can shoot you. He's got a 75mm gun, which is capable of 110 alpha, and will penetrate 91mm with standard ammo, and with a premium ammo, that goes up to 144. Now, Primo Bob does like to fire premium ammo a lot, but uh, he doesn't really need to that often, uh, only if he comes up against something which is equally heavily armoured, such as another Excelsior. Okay, doesn't appear to be any booming on the ice road. Oh, he's found two! And he's keeping moving. And I think what he's intending to do here, because he's getting shot by the uh, the B1, which has got a 47mm cannon. Um, yeah, he's getting hit by them. I think he's trying to get to this corner so he can force the enemy back. And, oh, look at that. The BT-7 has flipped himself. So we'll just attack the Stug for the moment and make sure that the BT-7 can't hit us while he's on his side. And that Stug is being peppered by standard 75mm rounds, but he is pulling back, and as soon as he pulls back far enough, we'll kill the BT-7. There we go. One shot, one more to kill. Oh! Kill steal! Yeah, the Marder 38T decided it would be funny if he took the kill there, so he took him out. But now this, this B1 has gone, well, YOLOing in. Unfortunately, it's not going to work out too well for him because with standard ammo, Provo Bob can just carve straight through the armour. He's aiming for the turret at the moment. You should aim for the turret. You should aim for the weak spots in the hull. That's it. That's better. And there you go. Done. So he's got his first kill. He could have had two, but he's got his first. Now, the enemy's bound to spot the fact that we've actually gone straight up the uh, ice road and all of their defenders have basically caved. I've got another B1, and that looks like a bot. Is that a bot? Oh, it's not a bot, actually. At least I don't think it is. Oh, it is a bot. Sorry, beg your pardon. I've looked at the team list and now I've seen... Yes, he's got a semicolon in front of his name and behind it, and that means he is a bot. Well, some of those shots actually have penetrated. The B1 fired HE rounds, but the Type T34 is firing APCR, so that's why he's getting through the armour. But the Type T34 is pulled back behind the B1 for the moment. Okay, B1 should be, shouldn't be difficult to actually take out. Oh, no, that was the wrong shot. He's loading the premium ammo now. That one went in. Got a high roll as well. Yup, that's a pen. Potential high caliber. He needs to finish off the B1 so he can get to grips with these other enemies because they are firing premium ammo and they're getting through. So just drive straight around the corner, kill the B1 with one shot and then you can think about the others. In fact, use the wreck of the B1 as cover to attack the others. He's being crafty, actually. He's allowed the B1 to just come straight out. He didn't kill him with the first shot. That's it. Do it now. That's better. Okay, he did take another round from the B1, but it was an HE round, so it's not, not a big deal. He's actually lost a fair bit of his health from the shots that actually came from that M10 and Type T34. But he can use the wreck that's just in front of him as cover to get at them, because they're going to be sitting there near their cap, 
scared well you know what i mean <laughs> they're going to be sweating a lot thinking that he's going to come around that corner any second and start finishing them off so just gradually move up get behind the wreck that's it and then if you side scrape off this wreck he's going to try and push the wreck that's probably not a good idea because it's a very heavy tank the char b1 very heavy um yeah that's not a good idea it's going to take you ages to get there if you side scrape off the hull at the moment i know i said don't expose your sides but you can side scrape because they're only going to hit the tracks and then you can get shots on that m10 rbfm without him being able to return the favor at least so long as he doesn't aim for the turret He's trying to get around the other side, which is... Well, I suppose he could do it if he can get an accurate shot in the end. He does! Now that thing's got no, practically no armour. And he's got the kill. Now he can move up. The t Type T-34 is the last enemy alive. There's a reduced number of game. There's only one... There's only 14 either side on this game. So go for the kill on this one. Just keep moving. Because otherwise your teammates will get there first. And they did... And that's the end of the game. Well, here's the end of battle stats for the first game. And that was an ace tanker game for Probo Bob in the Excelsior. He managed to get a shell proof for blocking more damage to the hit points of his own vehicle. A duelist for taking down two tanks who damaged him. And a fire for effect for doing more damage to the hit points of his own vehicle. He got a bruise in the middle for getting at least five critical hits in this one. He managed to get eight. He got the high caliber because he dealt the most damage in the game. And he got a steel wall as well because he blocked the most damage and he survived the battle uh, alive. 7,515 was the win eight from that game. Let's have a look at the team score. Well, you can see it was a much reduced numbers. There was only uh, seven players on either side in that one. Real players. 2006 hit points of damage went to Provo Bob. The next high scorer was the Type T34 in the enemy team, 1,303. And then it was the M10 RBFM on our team with 1,200. Oh, no, sorry, big pardon. It was the T67 on the enemy team. He beat the M10. Uh, he got 1,272 hit points of damage. When it came to kills, it was the M10 RBFM on our team with four kills. Three kills went to Provo Bob. He could have had a lot more. In fact, he could have had maybe at least five kills maybe even a top gun actually if he'd used apc on that stug earlier in the game because he did bounce a few rounds off the top of the vehicle uh he might have got that one as well uh two kills went to the mother 38t and the t67 on his team nobody on the enemy team managed to get more than one kill when it came to base xp it was probably bob on that one so he's got two out of three in this one 1268 base experience points to him 764 went to the M10 RBFM and 512 went to the M4A1. He fired 38 rounds, 28 direct hits and 20 penetrations. 2006 hit points of damage, all of it done at close range. 25 hits received from the enemy, only 7 of which actually penetrated. And most of those were the APC on rounds that were coming from the M10 and the Type T34. 16 non-penetrations, a lot of those came from the B1 and the other tanks uh, that were firing standard ammo at him and just bouncing. And 1,360 hit points of damage blocked by armour, 4 enemy vehicles spotted, 6 enemy vehicles damaged, 3 killed and 204 hit points of damage assistance. He earned 58,764 credits from the game, but after repair, ammunition, resupply and consumables, he actually only had 12,893 credits left over. Mind you, he actually used less premium ammo in this game than he did in previous games. As you may have noticed, he only switched to the APCR when he felt he absolutely had to. 60 bombs achieved in the battle and 1,902 XP, 6, 761 for this being a premium vehicle, took away 2,663 experience points altogether. So that's not a bad battle, but I think he missed out on the opportunity to get a few kills there, which he could have got. But his teammates were waiting behind him for him to knock a few holes into the enemy. So they went down to a one shot and then they jumped at the chance to kill Steel away from him. So, yeah. And of course, he missed out on that type T-34. He could have had that kill, but uh, unfortunately, he just stopped instead of actually uh, moving up on the enemy to get closer so he could actually start putting rounds in at close range he probably would have got the kill if he'd done that 
So that's the first battle. Let's have a look at the second. The second replay is on the south spawn of Ruenberg, and we're about to get underway. Okay. Well, I'm afraid this is another reduced numbers game, but it's only two short on this one, so 13 players either side. Looks like the uh, Churchill one's getting a bit of an assist from the T28, but the Excelsior is still pretty fast, 38.6 kilometers an hour, so he's actually moving under his own steam. Well, if it was steam, that is, of course, it's actually a diesel engine. Or is it a petrol engine? I think it was actually a petrol engine. Okay, he's got shots on the enemy. Panzer von Thier, a dangerous opponent in the best of days, and he's firing in this direction, and he's already bounced around off us. He'll probably fire APCR from now on. And he's got a wicked fire rate as well, this guy, so it's important to get this kill. Regardless, you need to get this kill. Oh, he's gone! And the kill shot to the Panzer von Thier came from the Churchill 1. We're now locating ourselves around the corner from the Churchill 1. He's probably going to stay on that corner for the moment, because if he tries to move up, he might get shot at. In the meantime, we do actually have some targets up near the village, which we claim at. And I think that's what he's going to do now. Okay, he's firing the APCR. You don't need the APCR, Bob. Fire standard ammo. It'll save you a load of money. He gets the second kill. Did he get the kill? No, he... Well, it's his first kill, actually. He's backing up a bit. You see, they're having difficulty trying to penetrate him at this range, and of course, because it's the frontal armour. The armour at the front is 114.3 millimetres, and the second kill goes to our T28. Okay, Churchill's decided to push forward, which is a bit foolish. Yeah, he pulled back, but he realised that he was actually going to get hit by more than one tank at the same time. Now, as you remember, the frontal arm is the stronger one, so he's now going to go straight through that Type 95, but he pulled back. Potentially, he's got a steel wall now because he's blocked enough damage. Go on, take this guy out. Remember, there are bots. That's it. Keep hitting. I think the Churchill's hitting our tracks, that's why. Type 95 did get around in, and he was firing uh, AP. And he's now out of the game, so that's the second kill for Provo Bob. Ooh, enemy tank directly ahead, M81. Takes a round. High roll. Go for it again. Yep, second one's a high roll. Go for it. Oh, he tracked him. Oh, he missed out on the kill again. So there's two kills that he's missed out on. But here comes the Churchill. Are you going to go around the corner? He's trying to side scrape and get into a position to do it. Probably not a good idea, because our Churchill one's just going to drive up to him. He's got three marks on that Churchill barrel. Go for the turret. Go for the turret. It's the one thing he can't side scrape. <laughs> okay, he's down. Still only two kills, but they're two up on the enemy. I remember, reduced numbers game. So there's only uh, 13 tanks and... Well, that's certainly going to put the enemy at a disadvantage, even though they've got four tanks in our side of the battlefield. We've got the town. And I think that Provo Bob's now going to go ham on the enemy. He's still firing the premium ammo. He just tracked that M8A1, put a round through him. Go for the kill shot. Yeah, well, there's one, but he needs another one. Oh, another kill stolen away from him. He could have five kills by now, actually, if he'd taken the kills that on tanks that he shot at. Okay, we're going to go after the Panzer 3, Ausrung FJ. He's facing off against our BT-7. They're both tier 4s, but the Panzer 3J is actually a lot better tank than the BT-7 because it's thinner armour. Panzer 3, Ausrung J is quite strong, actually. But I think... I seem to recall, I think that's the same tank that they got at Bobbington, uh, or is that the L version? I think they do have the up armored version of a Panzer III in the game. Just around the corner. 
He's waiting for you to pop round. A fire one round, but just couldn't get through the armour. So just go round this corner and finish him off. Oh, there you go. Now it's all yours. One more kill. One more shot, Rummer. That's it. There's only three enemies left, and it looks like some of them might be directly in front of you. In fact, one of them's the A20, and he just can't get through your armour, Bob. So go and get him. He's yours. Churchill one is coming up. Oh, the 820 is firing at us, but he's using the auto cannon. Yes, he's got that 37mm auto cannon, I think it is. Well, if we don't get a move on, the Churchill one's going to claim it, and of course they are capping at the other end. So this game could be over very, very quickly. Go this side, because he looks like he's running away from the Churchill. And if he pops around the corner trying to escape, we'll take him. Oh, the Churchill got him. And there's the next victim, the M5 Stewart. Stop firing the premium ammo, Bob. It's costing you money. You can penetrate him with standard ammo. That's only an M5 Stewart. One up his rear as he tries to run away. One more shot. That's it. Four kills now. And I think the Churchill ones offered you a platoon. And so you can platoon with him and uh, pick up the drugs and arms. There's only one enemy left, it's the looks. Are you going to platoon or was it, did you offer him the platoon? It may be the other way around, but the last enemy has been killed and the game is over. Here's the end of battle stats for the second game. And it was another ace tanker for Provo Bob in the Excelsior. He got a fire for effect for doing more damage than the hit points of his own vehicle. Fighter badge for getting out these four kills. He ended up with four exactly. A, a shell proof for getting more damage than... Uh, 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 blocking more damage than the hit points of his own vehicle. A duelist for taking down two tanks who damaged him. A hand of God for surviving the battle. Hammer received damage from four different enemies. A bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got 11. You've got the high caliber for dealing the most damage in the game, a steel wolf for blocking the most damage in the game, and a confederate for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. And his winning from this one was 10,500 and I think that's 83, but I have to check because, yeah, I'm going blind. 93, okay. <laughs> yes, I am actually going blind. I'm also going deaf, which uh, is kind of dis disconcerting. Anyway, let's have a look at team scores. Well, there you go. You can see in this game there was only six real players on either side. Prevo Bob got the highest damage with 2,531. The second highest damage was the T-28 with 1,717. And the third highest damage was, in fact, that Panzer Drei J. He got 1,614. When it came to kills, it was shared between Prevo Bob, the Churchill one, and the Panzer 3J, yes, but all got four kills apiece. Three kills went to the T28. Everyone else, I've got one kill or nothing. And when it came to base XP, Prevo Bob's got that one as well. So technically, he's got the top in all three columns. 1,435 base experience points to him. 837 went to the Churchill one. And the T28 managed 732. 40 shots fired in this game. 30 direct hits. 25 penetrations. And damage of 2,531 hit points, of which 231 were at more than 300 meters. Those were most of the shots he took from the center of town out towards the village. 31 hits received from the enemy, only 5 of which actually penetrated. 23 non-penetrations and 3 hits by wear splash damage from the enemy. 1,575 hit points of damage blocked by armor. He spotted 4 enemy vehicles, damaged 10 of the enemy, killed 4 and did 370 hit points of damage assistance. On a premium count, he earned 70,314 credits, but he got a whopping 135,000 credits for mission completions, so his grand total came to 205,314. After repair and ammunition respawn, yes, he did fire more premium ammo than was really necessary. I think he could have got away with standard ammo towards the end because most of the tanks he was firing at just didn't have the armour to stand up to even standard shells, let alone the premium. 99,893 credits profit. 
2,152 XP times two for the first victory, 861 for this being a premium vehicle, and took away 5,166 experience points altogether. Two Ace Tanker games, but I think really, if you look at this one, uh, I think he could have actually got another four kills than the four he actually did get. Uh, he could have killed that uh, Panzer, um, the A20, uh, if, if he'd been quicker off the mark, because the Churchill was very very quick to try and dive after that guy and get him and uh, he could have got several kills inside the town which he didn't get he didn't get the uh, uh the kill on the m8a1 that was definitely on the cards for him uh he could have had the kill on the panzer from fear uh because of course he went out and, and put himself in danger to actually get a shot on that guy and kill him and he might have actually got the Churchill 1 as well if he'd actually pushed forward and then got a quick shot into the side of the turret of the Churchill when he was trying to engage our guys who were going around him. So I think he could have taken away a Radley Walters out of this game. And uh, this tier is the, the first tier of which you can get a Radley's tier 5. So uh, a bit disappointing that he didn't get the Radley's, but at least he ended the battle with a win. And then the other thing, of course, is that he missed out on a, a Brothers in Arms. Now, I think he did offer the Brothers in Arms to the Churchill, not the other way round, uh, because I'm sure that Provo Bob would have accepted the Brothers in Arms, um, seeing as he could see that they both had four kills. So he knew that it was a certainty he'd get the medal. But sadly, he missed out on that one, I think, because the Churchill one didn't accept or maybe blocked the acceptance. But, uh, well, at least he came away with three medals, uh, all Battle Hero medals in this one. And, of course, he got medals in the previous game as well on Mountain Pass. If you enjoyed those replays, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And of course, do remember that we not only feature tanks, we do feature RT and there'll be more RT replays on the way shortly. And uh, do let other people know that we've got a sister channel called The General where you can watch fantastic replays with lots of medals and some really impossible games, you might think. But there's no commentary to distract you at all. It's just a straightforward battle, which will probably last, what, between 12 to 15 minutes. And uh, yeah, might, might amuse you. Thanks for watching.